Hey, I'm Nathaniel Fawson. I'm a professional archaeologist currently excavating in northern Texas, and I specialize in the archaeology of pre-colonial North America in the eastern woodlands, where I've been working and studying for about 10 years now. Today I want to answer as much as I can about one of the most common questions I get about my job, which is how do we know where to dig? Um, actually, finding sites in the first place is what we spend the vast majority of our time doing, and I'm going to be really general here because I don't want to teach a bunch of random people on the internet how to go out and destroy archaeological sites, but there are several methods that we use here in the eastern woodlands. So the most common and low-tech method is called shovel test survey, and this is what we use when we're going ahead of, say, like a, a highway construction or a wind farm or something like that. We'll be given maps of the area that's going to be impacted by construction, grid it out, and then dig shovel tests, which are about a, about a foot across, something like that, and dig those at regular intervals. Um, some states have us do 15 meter intervals, others have us do a shovel test every 30 meters, um, but we dig these holes, sift through the dirt for artifacts, and record what was found and where on the grid. And we use that information to decide where to focus excavations if anything worth further evaluation is found at all, which it not, not always is. Um, we're also looking for abrupt changes in soil that may indicate human activity. Um, so sudden pockets of very black soil, maybe from things like storage pits or cooking fires or kills from firing pottery, things like that. And we also have to keep an eye on surface vegetation. Um, I found more than one abandoned cemetery because the hillside it was on was covered with periwinkle flower, and that used to be planted in cemeteries all the time. So uh, disturbing cemeteries and human remains is extremely illegal, so keeping an eye out for this kind of thing uh, and avoiding it can keep you out of a lot of trouble, even on private property. So in the last few decades, there have been some other newer techniques that are useful for finding pre-colonial sites, and one is called geomagnetometry. Um, the idea here is that if someone dug a hole a few hundred years ago, say for food storage or a pit house or whatever, um, the new soil that fills in that hole will have a different magnetic signature than the soil surrounding that pit. So intensive burning also creates a different magnetic signature around than the, the unburnt soils that surround it. Um, and the magnetometer can read those differences in magnetic signature and magnetic strength. Um, so just like when we do shovel test surveys, we will grid out the area that we're invest investigating, take magnetic measurements at regular intervals, and then map out those results. And there are a few natural processes that can confuse the magnetometer, like fires or topographic depressions that fill up with similar magnetic-rich particles. So we have to be able to go back and ground truth what the magnetometry is, is telling us, but it helps us to plan ahead and focus where our excavations are going to go later. Um, now, a third method that gets talked about a lot, especially recently, is called remote sensing. You'll see a lot of uh, news articles about something called space archaeology, uh, which isn't a thing, but we will, it's, it's called remote sensing, and we'll use satellite imagery to find sites. It's a, um, it's a very real method that we've been using for a couple of decades, but it's gotten a lot of press recently because of uh, Sarah Parakak's work finding like Viking sites up in Canada and things like that. Um, remote sensing has a lot of uses, but we can use it to uh, monitor site destruction, like the frequency of looting pits on a certain site over time, things like that. But we can also use the imagery to find new sites. So a convenient quirk of nature is that archeological sites tend to be enriched with nutrients from the discard of waste. So food scraps, wood ash, manure from livestock, so on and so forth, these get built up in areas where people habitually live or, or are active. And so the plants that grow on top of those abandoned sites are healthier than the plants than in the surrounding areas. Um, so we can use the satellite imagery and augment it to target ultraviolet wavelengths, which tend to be reflected into space with greater intensity when plants are extremely healthy, as opposed to, you know, very dry, poorly, nu uh, poor nutrient soils. Um, so using that satellite imagery, we can look at the concentrations of ultraviolet signatures that make regular geometric patterns like circles or rectangles and check those for archaeological materials. 
So that's all I've got for this one. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.